And if you're wondering how does Greg actually win, he does have copies of Ashiok and Elspeth to get the job done. But as with most control decks, you just want to grind them into submission, and hopefully they'll tap out eventually. Just two for one enough times, keeping them off their impactful cards, and you can kind of win with whatever. A lot of removal here for Orange, however. He does have some main deck Bile Blights, four copies of Heroes Downfall, two Utter Ends, a Murderous Cut, and then three copies of End Hostilities. We can't forget about Elspeth's ability to minus as well. So we do see a Thoughts he's here from Chapman the second. Looks like he might go with the Divination. There's also a Dig Through Time and a couple other cards over there, but wants to stop Orange from drawing cards pretty early. Though this is a very good hand against Thoughtseize for Gregory here with two copies of Dig Through Time and a Divination. Murderers cut the draw there for Orange. Judge. It is a Temple. And Hostilities is going to go to the bottom. Chapman will draw a card here. You see he does have a Temple of Abandon in his hand. Top card. Staying on top pretty quickly. And now it looks like a Thoughtseize. So Orange is going to have to put that card back on top of his deck. Looks like he moved a little bit too quickly there. So you saw he scried, and then he said he wanted to thought see. So we'll make sure that this game state is appropriate, and it looks as though it is. You see a flooded strand there, a couple copies of Heroes Downfall, Dig Through Times, and a Murderous Cut. So I think Jack is on five cards this game, from the best that I can tell. And he's kept in Stoke, in Stoke the Flames as well, which really doesn't have any targets in Gregory's deck. So a little surprised to see that in here. He's very resource light, and Greg's hand is just so durable against these discard spells, because it's just removal spells and card drawing. Yeah, the one thing that Greg doesn't really have is a lot of lands. You see he's got the Temple of Deceit in play and then a Flooded Strand, and that's really about it. Again, two dig through times, the Murderer's Cut and Hero's Downfall. It looked like Greg may have snuck a peek at his top card here before the thought seeds did go off. A little bit of miscommunication between the players, so you can see that a judge is intervening here, and we're going to get everything cleared up before we do move forward in this game. Yeah, hard to know exactly what happens in this scenario without hearing the verbal communication. Yeah. So we will find out here in just a moment when we do have something for you guys. We will certainly let you know. Maybe Greg is forced to shuffle his deck. He does know the bottom card of his deck because of the temple. So you can leave that card off to the side. You saw him pull that to the bottom, and he can shuffle the rest of his deck since he does know the top card. And that looks like exactly what will happen here. So, And I like this is not a really recent rules change, but it is different from how it was when I was playing competitive Magic, where it's just re-randomize the deck, set aside the stuff that where the orientation of the deck is known, and play on. All right, Orange will draw a card. And there's another copy of Flooded Strand. He will play one of those and pass the turn back over to Chapman II, who will draw a card. Wooded Foothills quickly comes into play. He will sacrifice that. Go down a little bit lower in the process. There is a forest. You saw a Crater's Claws in his deck, so he does have some Fireballs available. And Chapman looks like he's going to play a Courser. Take a look at the top card here for Jack. It'll be a hero's downfall. Over to Orange we will go. See if Orange has any interest in sacrificing this flooded strand here. He is actually, oddly enough, quickly working his way to dig through time. He's already got two cards in the graveyard. Flooded strand will be a third. Another flooded strand will be a fourth. He just want to pick up a copy of Herborg. And the Herborg is, is ideal here because he was, I think, contemplating using a murderous cut in that spot. But he would like to keep his graveyard intact to help with the dig through time. So the murderer's cut here allows him to, or excuse me, the Urborg rather, allows him to just use Hero's Downfall on something, save his graveyard for something else. Top card here for Chapman. The second is an Elvish Mystic. So that's no help with the Courser. Now it's time to attack for two with the Courser. We'll see if Orange wants to use a removal spell here. Looks like he's fine taking two. Going to go down to 18. I think he wants to hold this removal spell for, you know, one more turn. See if, or through this main phase, rather, see if Jack follows up with anything of significance. And if he doesn't, he'll probably use the downfall on the Courser. See Greg slide forward the murderous cut in his hand as well. Now he's kind of deciding between the downfall. And it looks like he might go reaching that way. And he will. It's a tough play because right now Gregory's hand is a little so soft to something like Xenagos. So I'm sure that he would prefer to keep the hero's downfall, but again, the upside of keeping his graveyard intact for this dig through time is too high. You saw Orange actually tap the Flooded Strand for mana there because there is an Urborg in play on his side. Of course, that interaction, Urborg turns every land into a swamp. That includes Fetchlands, so they do tap for mana. As Chapman will draw and play his Elvis Mist before passing the turn back, Orange is going to sacrifice his Flooded Strand, go down a little bit lower, see what land he wants to search up here. It looks like he's going past Plains, so Island is on the way. There that is. I mean, it might be time to dig. I think so. I'm looking at four in the graveyard and four mana. 
It's not hard for this deck to dig through time. And so there it is. He'll delve the four cards. And now it's time to take a look at seven of them. We'll see what Orange finds here as he goes through a couple of lands. You see a hero's downfall. Elspeth as well. And he gets one more card, which will be an island. Consult the grips, take a look at another dig through time, along with the murderous cut, and then hostilities. You see a disdainful stroke, it looks like he's pulling forward. Along with maybe old Elspeth. He's pretty far away from casting Elspeth right now. He's going to go with the Temple of Enlightenment instead. Yeah, I like this. Pretty good land and take, that's for sure. Halston gets to an Elspeth in case he draws one. And he kind of wants to just make land drops anyway. And he has any hostilities in hand, so he needs a fifth land and a second white regardless. And that's the second white there in the, the temple. First one, of course, being the Flooded Strand. And the draw for the turn was actually a Watery Grave. So, or excuse me, not a Watery Grave. It can't be a Watery Grave. It's a Polluted Delta. Yeah. I'm dating myself. Well, the art is similar. They are very similar. The blue-black lands all have very similar art. Yeah. I mean, Temple of Abandoned and Stomping Ground look fairly similar. They are very it's, close, it's, yeah. You know, it's not uncommon. I suppose the range can't be very wide on those lands. Like yeah. the artwork, it really can't be all that different. There's a temple. Because most two-color pairings draw from the same creature types, the same scenery, the same whatever. So they're going to look similar. There's a mountain. Chapman looks like he's going to fire off thoughts. He's now. This is his third one of the game. Orange will show his grip. Again, end hostilities, murderous cut, dig through time, disdainful stroke, and that polluted delta. Well, I, I feel like Jack almost has to take the dig through time out of his hand because it, there's nothing. All these other cards are so redundant, and he really can't let Gregory draw more cards, but. It's going to be hard for him to beat everything in Gregory's hand. There's no two ways about it. Looks like he's going to go with the unhostilities here. So that's going to bite the dust. There will be an attack for one. And we're going to go back Orange's way. Orange will draw a card. Looks like it was a copy of Divination. A card that he has four of in his deck. He is very fond of that card drawing spell. Divination is very powerful against Thoughtseize decks. Polluted Delta, the land that Orange will play. He'll just pass the turn back with the ability to dig through time here on this turn if he'd like. Chapman just going to draw and play a land attack for one. Orange is going to go down to 14. And as you mentioned, it's no revelation, but it's still pretty good. You so see Greg right here tap out to try to maintain as much of his graveyard as possible because he has so much delve in his deck. Yeah, it's murder's caught in his hand. Yeah. I'm sure he'd like that to be a little bit cheaper. Yeah, the nice thing about Dig Through Time is it allows you to play some one-ofs or at least shave the numbers on some cards. That's why he's able to play a card like One Murderous Cut. Looks like Orange is going to take a hero's downfall on Elspeth. These other five cards headed to the bottom of the deck. But life is pretty good here for the Citrus Assassin as he will draw a copy of Thoughtseize. Can cast that to clear the way if he'd like, but he's going to start off with a Divination. Yeah, this lets him have a really nice turn of divination into Thoughtseize while holding up Disdainful Stroke, and then most likely untap and do whatever he wants. That Faded Retribution was one of the cards that he drew from the divination. Now he's going to fire off this Thoughtseize. You can see Chapman's hand. He's got to stoke the flames in a hero's downfall. So your choice, Greg. Which and one of those spells you'd like? I was not a huge fan of this play from, from Chapman. I think I would have just fired off the Stoke the Flames. Your only way to win this game most likely is to try to, you know, peel, chain together running removals or running burn spells. Yeah, you know, stoke and then maybe, a, you know, Crater's Claw, something like that. Here's a Murderous Cut's going to get that elf off the table. So Orange looks like he's trying to preserve his life total now at this point. Because Stoke has him at a virtual eight, though he does have Disdainful Stroke in his hand. Now he's going to try to close things out. Here's an Elspeth. Takes a downfall, so he knows the Elspeth's in the clear. Gets to untap and Disdainful Stroke. Whatever the follow up may happen to be. And that should about lock it up. Yeah, there is no follow up now. Another Elspeth to draw. Elspeth's going to tick up. We'll have six tokens out there, three of which will get to attack. So Chapman is going to be down to nine all of a sudden. And we can't forget, between the fetch lands and the three cops of Thoughts, he's, he's dealt himself a lot of damage this game. So Elspeth can actually clear things up pretty quickly. No, Chapman did draw a copy of 
Garrick, apex predator. Unfortunately for him, that's not going to resolve. And there is the stroke. Yeah, I don't <laughs> think so. That card's quite powerful, but I'd rather that not be in play. Orange going to draw a card very quickly. Attack here for six. He's got Chapman down to three. Elspeth going to go up yet again. And then three more tokens here for Greg. There's a swamp and passing of the turn. Chapman will draw a card. You see the course of Crewfix in his hand. Take a look at the top card. It's a copy of Liliana Vess. And the last card, as we all know, is just to stoke the flames. So Orange is going to untap all those soldiers. He'll draw a card. He can go ultimate Elspeth if he'd like, which he will. Plus two, plus two, and fly for all those tokens. And it looks like Greg Orange wins this match over Jack Chapman the second. Two games of zero Esper control down to Jun Monsters. And even though Greg got up to a rough start, pretty easy one there for him. Well, you know, Jack was on five cards and had a two reactive of the hand. Yep. And Gregory's hand of just removal spells and card drawing was really well suited to what Jack was bringing to the table, which was not much pressure and a lot of reaction of his own. So congratulations to Gregory Orange playing Esper Control. As usual, he is one of the real few control mages left out there. He always plays control at every opportunity. Again, Revelation is gone, one of his favorite weapons. But dig through time, it'll have to work. Well, the, the power level of the, of the format as a whole is a little bit lower than it was last year, which helps the sort of deck. And there's a lot of really powerful options, and Dig Through Time is no joke. Esper is a deck that we don't really talk a lot about. You know, we're still trying to figure out what the best control deck is in the format. We saw Blue Black Control at the Pro Tour in the hands of Owen Turtwald and Ivan Flock. Um, you know, that deck definitely performed quite well. When we see Esper here from Orange, he had another great tournament at the Pro Tour as well. So we'll see exactly what the control shells are going to end up looking like here. There are a lot of different ways.